Welcome guys, now let's work on the jump state, now. In the animal controller there are two types of jump states. You can use the basic jump, which the animal controller will handle, all the jump movement or the root motion jump. In this case I'm going to use the root motion jump so you know when and how to use it. Let's find on the raccoon which jump animations we have. We have a jump in place, we have a jump forward, and we have a jump run. And this is what I call root motion jump. You can identify them because they have a start, an air, and a jump end all in one. Now these animations, in order to work with the jump root motion state, they need to move in the Y axis. You can see here the root of the animal is also moving in the Y axis. If by any chance your jump animations look like this, do not move the root along with the animal, you need to fix that. You need to check that the root transform position in the Y axis is now baked into pose. So the root can move along with the animal. Now I'm going to use this one, this one, and this one. So, going to create a new substate machine. I'm going to call it jump. And I'm going to make the transition where the state is on and the state value is equal to 2 because the ID for jump is 2. Now, let's drag these three animations to the animator. I'm going to set the default state to jump in place and I'm going to select the three animations and I'm going to tag it jump and rechecking jump is the tag we need perfect now how can we tell the animal controller which of these animations to use we can do this by using the jump state jump profiles that you will find here so I'm going to create three jump profiles, one for jump in place, one for jump forward, and one for jump run. In the animal controller help, you can find what every parameter does, but in this case, we're going to focus on the most important ones. We're gonna use the minimum vertical parameter to define which of the profile is going to play. So if we jump in in place, the vertical should be zero. If we jump in forward, meaning that we are walking or trotting, the minimum vertical needed should be 0.5. And for the jump run, the minimum vertical should be greater than 2.5 because the vertical speed of the animal when running is 3. Now, back on the animator, let's create some transitions. So, from entry, I'm going to use the jump forward if the vertical is greater than 0 0.5 and here if the vertical is greater than 2.5 meaning that if we are using run which the vertical speed is 3 meaning is greater is greater than 2.5 we're gonna use run if it's greater than 0 0.5 we're going to use forward now we need to check that the transitions order are in the correct place. So we need to check the higher speed first. We check first if the run animations are playing, meaning the vertical is greater than 2.5. If that transition is not executed, then we check for the vertical greater than 0.5, which means that we are walking or trotting. And if none of those two transitions are executed then we're going to use the default one which is jump in place now back on the state panel with the jump state selected and here i'm going to increase the jump ray distance to five on all profiles i use this jump ray value to cast a ray to the ground when the animal is on the highest position of the jump and if I found ground, then I can complete the jump. If not, 
then I'm going to transition to the fall state. Now we need to check the maximum height of each jump and also the time when the animal lands. So let's start with the jump in place. Double click on the animation. And here you'll notice that the highest point of the jump is roughly 60%, meaning 0 0.6. And the landing or exit jump animation is like 82%. So it's a normalized value of 0 0.82. Now going back to the raccoon, I'm going to set 0 0.6 and 0 0.82 on the exit time. Now to test this out we need to hit on the debug panel and enable debug states and here on the jump state let's make sure we have the debug state also enabled. So now we can check what is the correct value for the jump right here but first we need to create an input for the jump state. Luckily, on the Malverse input, we can just simply right click on the name of the component and hit create jump input. And that will create an input using the spacebar to activate the jump state. Here on the general tab, you can see the enter input matches the input that we have created. If I press space, let me collapse this component so it's a bit faster you will see that when we jump on the console you will get a lot of messages related to the states and we need to find the minimum distance to complete the jump in place which is the value that we need to set on the jump ray so in case of jump in place it's something like 1.25 so let's test it several times to see if we get the same value all the time and yep it's roughly 1.25 so so now going back to the jump state let's set the value on the jump rate and I'm going to set the jump rate value to 1.26 because we are testing on a fat plane if the ground is a bit irregular we need to add a little margin to that jump rate so keep in mind that you have to test all the jumps in a plane first and then on some irregular terrains now let's find the fall and exit time for the jump forward. So let's go to jump and select the animation for the jump forward. And the highest point should be 60, 62, 60, let's use 62. And the landing is gonna be 85. So 0.62 and 0.85. Now let's test while trotting and walking and it sets the minimal jump distance is 0 0.94 so I'm going to set it to 0 0.95 always a bit higher and for the jump run let's do the same let's go to speeds let me set the start index to 3 which is wrong as you can see here and let's go back to states i'm going to select the run here i'm going to check that the highest position of the jump is something about 60 again and the landing is 87 so 60 and 87 and now let's find the jump ray minimum distance I'm going to run and I'm going to jump and it says is 1.12 the minimum distance that we need so 1.13 to give a little margin to uneven grounds and now let's test this and let me show you why we are using those values so if i'm on the ground and i jump you'll see on the gizmos a red ray is cast this is the jump ray and if the jump ray find the ground you'll see that the jump can complete its animation 
just like the console sets. So here you will see it says can finish the jump and the raccoon will complete the animation and it will land and he exits at the correct time to go to locomotion. But what happens if I jump from a higher ground? Then you'll see that the ray, the jump ray, won't find any ground. So we are going to transition to the fall state, which is exactly what we want. That is why we calculated ahead of time those values. So try always to keep testing on different high levels to see if the animations are played correctly. And as you can see, if we are on the ground, we can finish the jump. Now, one thing I do often with the animator for the animal controller is to have multiple entry transitions for a single state. So for example, if I want to enter from jump to fall, I can have a different transition time. Now, on the fall state, by default, I'm using a transition duration of 0.25. So if I'm on idle, jump, or locomotion, I will always use that transition time. But I want to use a different transition time for jump. So what I'm going to do is to duplicate that transition from fall and rename it fall jump. Now, if I'm coming from jump, which means if the last state is equal to two, which means the last state was from jump, I'm going to use a different transition time, let's say 0.5. And since this is a big transition, I'm going to set the interruption source to next state. Now, since we are using any state to do our animations, we need to reorder the transitions. And file from jump need to be executed before the default all transitions. So now again, if I jump, the transition will last longer from jump to fall. Another thing we can improve on the jump profiles is the jump on a cliff. Now, if I jump on front of this cliff, you will see that the jump looks okay, but it can be improved. And that is because the raccoon found that he can finish the jump animation. Now for this tutorial, let's do it only for the jump run profile. Here you will see that you have a cliff land distance and this will cast a second rate with this length starting on 0.3 and 0.6 of the animation normalized time to check if we found ground sooner. And now the jump animation will be interrupted if the raccoon finds the ground in the middle of the jump. And if I enable gizmos, you'll see that when I jump, those black lines represent the cliff time. So if those black lines touches any ground, the jump will be interrupted. And that's it. In the next video, we're going to set the swim state.